I declare over you that this month every news that will come from you and your family will be good news. Amen. I declare that the Lord has helped you from ages past will not leave you right now. Amen. Your life will be full of the mercy, will be full of the grace of yes. God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The evidence that God answered prayers will saturate your life. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. No evil shall come near you. Amen. No plague shall come near your dwelling place. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I declare irrevocably blessed. Amen. You are irrevocably blessed. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we shout a big hallelujah? Hallelujah. No, 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 no kind of lucky hallelujah today. No, no lucky hallelujah today. Real, real apostolic hallelujah. Amen. No, 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 hallelujah. No, 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 no. You go here hallelujah today. Leave that one. Praise God. Let's go wrong. Amen. Real apostolic. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Praise God. Please, you may have your seat. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. It's great to see everyone in church today. It's great. This month, we're talking about a very powerful topic that has affected everyone. And we're talking about the subject of recovering from emotional trauma and pain. We're talking about emotional healing. We're recovering from emotional trauma and pain. Recovering from emotional trauma and pain. And let me say this quickly. Maybe I'm going to start with the scripture someone says why is it important to teach this and, and i will tell you what it is the bible says in the book of third john verse 2 it says i wish above all things that you'll prosper even as your soul does what prosper it listen to this people once your emotions are not prospering it will take toll on every area of your life once your emotions are not prospering it will affect every single area of your life it will affect the way you talk it will affect the way you speak it will affect your marriage you know it will affect a lot of things you know sometimes um, sometimes when i'm counseling couples that have marital challenges you know what i notice when i when I'm, i notice that the couples know what to do but the emotion is not there so that causes trouble I've seen people that have a lot of emotional challenges and the emotional challenges will lead to a marital misbehavior. It will even affect them as a person. It will affect them in life. It will affect them in business. One time I spoke to a lady. She's very top in the banking sector. She's very, very successful, but very hardworking. And as I spoke to her, I, I noticed that everything I say, she would just bring her work and use her work to brandish herself. And when I got deeper, I discovered that she was trying to run away from life using her work. And she had become an overachiever because of the pain she had suffered. She had said to herself, if I'm not good in marriage, if I'm not good to be married, if I don't have a man in my life, I can as well marry my job and all of those kind of things. And that's exactly what she did. That's exactly what she did. So today we're talking about, we're talking about recovering from emotional trauma and emotional pain. I'm going to share some personal stories and I hope that today the Lord will heal. The Lord will heal. The Lord will touch. The Lord will do so many things in your own life personally in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. All right. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 verse 24. Matthew chapter 13 verse 24. Yes. The Bible says, and another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of God is like unto a man which sowed a good seed in his field. Verse 25. The Bible says, But while men slept, and this is talking about what the devil did. He said, While men slept, watch this, his enemy came and sowed tears amongst the wheat and went his way. Verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, there appeared the tears also. And I want to notice something here. Notice that the tears, which was the dangerous seed that was sown, nobody saw it until after some time. The nature of emotional pain and trauma is that most of it happens to us at one time in our life, but most of it happens to us from when we're really young. And most of you will never know you're dealing with emotional pain or trauma until you grow older and this pain shows up this trauma shows up 
for some reason you just don't know why you don't for some reason you just don't know why you can't give yourself to your marriage for some reason you know i was talking to a very successful man this man is literally a billionaire and he was explaining to me and and he was explaining to me he said um, i'm a billionaire but there's something I, I i do that i don't like i said what is it he said i like sex ah i said what am i like sex he said let me give an example he said um this particular week i tra i traveled and pastor without exaggerating in seven days i had sex with nine women and and when he said that when he said that you know of course there's a spiritual part to it but I'm very logical. I have to move on. I want to look through it from all spectrum, both naturally and spiritually. So I said, okay, okay. You have something nine women. And this, you know, I mean, he has the money, but he's quite young also. He's in his 30s. You know, I said, you had sex with nine women. And I asked him, I said, um, when you have this sex, is this something that happened? Are you happy or are you sad? And he goes, mm, I have sex all the time, but I understand this thing. So I knew that it was all the time. I said, this particular time, were you going through a season where things were tough? Then he looked back and said, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, pastor, you're right. Ah, oh, that was when I was trying, something happened in my business and I went into a depression. I said, that's great. I said, remember all the times you had the, all this amount of sex, what happened? And he said the same thing. He said, oh, wow, I can see the trend. It's when I'm down. And I said, good. When you go to that same location, but business is doing so well, do you engage in a lot of sex? He said, that's true. I don't. Then I said, what has happened to you is that something has happened to you and has taught your mind that when you're going through stress, that sex is your way to detoxify. And I'm saying so because all of us here, the Bible says, and when the blade sprung up, the, the trauma is real. Trauma is real. Trauma can come from something that happened as your childhood. It can come from the death of a person. And I know we pray, but prayer alone cannot solve trauma. I'm broken. I am broken when I see marriages that two good people come together. There's really nothing wrong with them individually. It's the trauma that they have that they brought into the marriage. Some people are wonderful, but it's a trauma that they have. Something that happens to them and their parents may never know about it. I'll give a story. You know, and someone says, oh, my family is perfect. Let me tell you something. There's no family that is not dysfunctional. The level of dysfunction is what? Just varies. In fact, if your family is perfect, it can be a problem. The reason why is that most times when you say there's a perfect family, it's two parents that hide the reality of their imperfection from their children. True or false? And what happens to those children? And let me tell you something. Parents that do that, you're not helping your child. Because your child is going to grow up with a false sense of the world. Your child is going to grow up with a false sense. He will not know what it is. And I'll give an example. One time, I mean for the first time, some, some time ago, me and my wife had an argument. And my first son heard us. And this was the first time he would ever hear or see us have an argument. He, he, so I could tell that he wasn't used to it. I, I felt bad that he heard us have an argument. But I felt I must also address it. So I called him and I said, okay, me and your mom had an argument and this and this and this. And as I was going to feel bad, God said, God, God really put this in my heart. I felt that God put this in my heart. And it was this. It says that there's nothing to be ashamed about. He said, your son, I've seen the reality of marriage. He said, if he doesn't see that and he, has, and he got married and has challenges, he will not know you had challenges and you solved it. He said, but now you are exposing it to him. And he told me, be careful of overprotecting your child from the realities of life. And that's the challenges of the middle class. So when I, I spoke to him, he said, I understand. He said, adults also have their own challenges. I must talk about it. And I said, oh, wow. That's a very mature response from my son. And I was proud of him. So the reason, and I'm saying so because one of the problems of the church is this. The church like perfection that does not exist. The pastor wants to talk as if he doesn't have his own challenges. No, but everyone that has own challenges. People are not looking for a perfect leader. They're looking for a leader that is perfectly honest. Glory to God. The Bible says, and the blade sprung up and the barefoot and also the tears, the tears also appeared. There's something about growth. When you begin to grow, as your life is growing, your pain also grows. That's why you will notice people that were raped when they were young. It's when they get into their 20s and 30s that that rape begins to dawn on them. And they begin to be like, it was so painful. And, and there's no reason for that. I'll give you my own story. And this, this is very powerful. 
about trauma. Before I tell my story, I want to let you def- I want to define what trauma is. What is trauma? Trauma is the lasting emotional response from living through a stressful, scary, or life-threatening event. What is trauma? Trauma is a lasting emotional response from living through a stressful, scary, or life-threatening event. Trauma is a lasting emotional response from living through a stressful, scary, or life-threatening emotional event. Uh, you know, w- w- one of the uh, you know one of the ladies, one of the ladies that was close to me, one of the ladies, and it's a lasting emotional response. One of the ladies that was close to me, I, I just got close to her, and we began to talk. And um, I just I said, "You've been close to me for five or seven years right now. I've never seen you say that you have a boyfriend." I said, he said, ah, Pastor, if I have someone, I will tell you now. I, of course, she was honest. And I said, okay, that's fine. I said, and I asked her, okay, when last did you date? And she said something like maybe four years ago or five years ago. I said, hmm? I said, you're young, you're in your 20s. Why are you taking so long to date? He said, there's nobody. When people say that kind of thing, you can tell, I could read the body language that something was wrong. So I began to ask her questions. And I'm not even sure what I asked her. Next thing I knew, she bowed down the head. And by the time she lifted it up, the eyes are turned red tears dripping down our eyes he said it was when it was about seven or eight years ago he said we went to sleep with her in our family friend's house and um one of their kids came into the room i was and raped me and slept with me and she said since that time i felt useless i felt nobody will value me i felt nobody will appreciate me and every time I go, there's that shame, even though she don't, she wears good clothes that she carries in her system. There's that every time she sees a guy that should be close to her. Remember this with a family friend. He said, There's a level of he said, I put myself away because I think that they're going to do it take me again. And that's the thing about trauma. Trauma is so powerful that if you find yourself in the same place you found yourself, you will react the same way. Because that response has been stored in your subconscious. And I understand what it means. I, I will give my own story. You know, when we're younger, when, when, when I was younger, we had traveled and I was meant to share this room with a friend. And when I was meant to share this room with a friend, he came, he came back and, and I slept off and he, you know, took his bath. I mean, I could hear the water swimming, but I was ready asleep. Next thing, I was sleeping. I just saw someone touching my body. I didn't know someone touching me touching me i couldn't be bothered initially but it became intense so i opened my eyes and i saw him right i saw his head right in my face and he was trying to kiss me he was trying to kiss me and um i I know what you're thinking i slapped him and beat him up right but that's not what i did and this is the first time i experienced this in my life in the moment i just froze I just rose. And he touched my body, touched my, took off my shirt. It was as if I was paralyzed to respond. Took off my shirt. I just froze. I never understood what it was until some time ago. It's called emotional freezing. When something happens to you and you check out of your body, and many of you have experienced it here, it's, it's as if you are here, but you stepped out here. And you're not looking at what is happening to you as if you're not the one is happening to. But that emotional freezing is the work of trauma. And the reason I'm saying so is here. Many of you are here. You have checked out. In your marriage, you are dead physically, but you have checked out. You've checked out. And you've checked out because of the trauma you went through in the marriage. Some of you, as soon as, when you're at work, you are happy, joyful fellow. Dun, 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 As soon as you get to the gates of your house and they open the gates, you check out. There's a good, hi, hi. I've eaten, I've eaten. Are you okay? I'm okay. You checked out. And that's one of the things trauma does. When you have trauma, trauma can make you a person that becomes emotionally unavailable. This is not who you used to be. 
but because of trauma, number one, you have become emotionally unavailable and you check that. And you, because you're emotionally unavailable, you put boundaries around yourself so much so that nobody can, you, you don't do emotional conversation. You have a big door before your heart, nobody can enter. Once anybody wants to get like familiar and talk about emotional things, you're just like, uh, yeah, thanks, you know, I don't really do that. And the reason why is that you just put the emotional boundary there. And many of you are here and you've literally checked out. You've just checked out. You've checked out of your body. When you have sex with your wife, it's just two, two bodies coming. Because really, there's no emotion connected again. Because you checked out. As a matter of fact, when your husband is sleeping with you, you'll be thinking, Tinkle, tinkle, little star. Oh, I wonder what. Ah, you're not done. Okay. Oh, I wonder what you are. Huh? Above the sky, do I said, Finish. Oh, finish. Oh. He now says, You're not responding. I'm responding. Oh, I like it. Oh, I like it. Oh, I like it. Say that. What do I even like here? <laughs> Get done. Even his breath stinks. <laughs> But the reason now why you checked out. Some of you that are single here, you know, you're single, you're praying God, give me a relationship, and there's someone that is really talking to you, but you cannot find yourself responding because really you've checked out. And you will say nobody's pursuing you, but everybody's pursuing you, but, but you cannot notice because you are not present to notice that someone is actively pursuing you the bible says it and when that happens and, then, and when that happens this is it says and when the blade sprung up and brought forth seed then the tears also appeared glory to god i said glory to god i said glory to god and, and i'm saying this because I'm saying this because if you have unresolved trauma, if you have unresolved pain, and you're telling yourself, see what you're telling yourself, you say, time will heal it. Watch this now. Time does not heal emotional trauma and pain. Time does not heal emotional trauma and pain. Emotional trauma and pain heals with time plus the right actions. It means that time alone will not heal the trauma. Time alone will not heal the pain. I came from a polygamous family and you know all of you that think polygamy is great the only reason why you think it's great is because you didn't come from one I came from a polygamous family my father was quite successful my I told you I have a British stepmom I have a Jamaican stepmom I have a Nigerian stepmom I'm global <laughs> but you know my Jamaican stepmom was quite when she was younger she was she's a lovely christian right now lovely christian woman but the moment she knew that she had stepsons what my grandmother told me that my father was in the police first she brought her my father's gun he said i'll kill everybody and kill myself that's what i was told i don't know how true it was so because of that the arrangement was that we would stay apart so I'd gone to see my uncle that had, that had a hospital, it went in the hospital and all of those things. And I was, you know, but the way the hospital was, hospital was like in two or three floors. Then they stayed in another floor, just in the same, in the same compound. And my dad and my stepmom had come. But I was already in the house. And the way it worked was that the driver would drop in the morning, come back and pick in the evening. You know how children, children are. You know, and, uh, <laughs> hey, Jesus. So my mother and my father had come unannounced but I was in the house. My, and, and I'm showing you what trauma does because when I say trauma, it doesn't mean something big happened to you. Trauma is not, it's about what happened to you, but not only that, how you interpreted it. And that's why when you shut down people's emotions and say, that's not true. Listen to me. You are not my emotions. You cannot invalidate my emotion. This is how I feel. It might not be real to you, but this is how I feel. And all of you that have children, if your children have emotions that are strong, don't say, why do you feel that way? That's nonsense. It cannot be nonsense. See, seek to understand them. And listen, this is why men die early. They don't talk. Because every time a man has things, you say, suppress it. You say, hey, you're a man, keep it down. You're a man, go low. You're a man, don't talk. You're a man, don't cry. Then die. 
That's why you just see men. I, I mean, just like yesterday, there was a case I heard of suicide. Someone just killed himself. And the reason why that if they don't talk, they will kill themselves. Everybody needs an outlet. And we train men from when they are young not to talk. You say, don't cry, you're a man. Ah, don't do that, you're a man. Don't do this, you're a man. And, and the man is suffering and he's suffering and he's groaning and he's groaning. Then he dies one day. I know men that will just pack their load and walk out of a marriage. There's a case I was dealing with. It. There was a case I was dealing with. The man and the woman were living together. They went to work. He went to work. He didn't come back home. The girl was worried. Called, called, called. His number is not going. The next day, called, called. The, the third day, she just received a phone call from America. He said, hello. He said, ah. So she heard her husband's voice. He said, ah, I've been looking for you. Are you okay? Is it one chance? Are you kidnapped? He said, I'm not kidnapped too. Look at your number very well. He said, I'm now in the U.S. He said, I'm not married. I did not know you. You did not know me. He said, God has blessed us apart. Please, I've released you. I'm, I'm released myself. Before that man could get there, there was something that was going on. And he got there because he did not talk. And I'm saying so because all of us that has male kids and all of us are male, we must encourage the masculine gender to talk. And when they are talking, don't say you're too emotional. Praise God. The power of trauma. Because of trauma, you just become emotionally not available. You never, you, you know, what, what does it mean? What does that mean? Number one, when people are emotionally not available, what does that mean? Number one, they never pay attention to their emotions. They never pay attention to them. They just they never pay attention. Number two, number two, they, you know, they think talking about their emotion is a waste of time. Number three, they, they lack emotional response. So when you tell people that have trauma, that, oh, I, I feel this way, you just write and say, oh my God, I don't know what to say. Because they don't know how to connect emotionally. So I was telling the story of my, my dad and my stepmom. So when they came, my uncle just ran up to the house and said, your dad is here and stepmom is here. That's a big problem. And I want to show you what trauma is. And he said, you know what? I don't know what to do right now, but you have to find your way home. And my uncle counted money to me and said, this is money. Take bus, take taxi and go home. And before that time, I had not used bus or taxi before. And I had to go home. I didn't take any bus or taxi. The house was a one hour, 30 minutes from my house. I walked home and all through my walk, I was crying. I was crying because it was not about my mom or dad. I said, have I become a disease that my father should not see? What is it about me that will make them... I said, I'm the young person here. They should be protecting me, but they are protecting the adults. Growing up, I have better perspective. But when you're a child, a child has a lot of emotions and has no explanation for it. And that's why all of you that have kids and tell your children deep things, you are ruining them. They don't have the emotional capacity to carry the things you are telling them. Single mothers, are you hearing? Single mothers, you will make your child your confidant. You'll be reporting what the men you are toasting or that dating or what the father did. You'll be telling a five-year-old child, a seven-year-old child, you know what you're doing? You are making, you will, that child will become emotionally overburdened. At a young age, it will grow old. And you will see that child malfunctioning. And the reason why it's malfunctioning is this. It's like loading a 2KV generator on and I pass my neighbor generator. It should be shutting down because the child does not have the what? The capacity to carry those discussions. Let's read a more scripture and we'll close. I, I, I can never forget. I, and although they never, in fact, one day I told my cousin, which is my uncle, so what happened? I mean, it's like, wow, is it? Wow. He said, I never knew that happened. He said, but he was not trying to rationalize. You know, we're adults now. We're trying to rationalize it. I said, now I understand. But that one hour, 30 minutes 
from that hospital to the house, I cried all through. Because before that time, I've not seen my dad for two months. So, when they say your dad is around, your first thing is like, oh, wow, let's go and see him. Now, you can't go and see him because he's your stepmom. And I felt unwanted. I felt unsafe. I felt this and this. And it moved with me through my life. And some of you are here. The reason why you feel as if nobody loves you is because you came from a house where you were not wanted. And it's not as if you're not wanted. It's because your parents did things, said things that made you feel those things may not be reality, but it does not change your feelings. And some of you are in marriages where you have checked out. Your husband brings that flower. Your wife ties a ribbon, ties a ribbon on herself to say, uh, to let you know, I love you. Let's do sex tonight. You don't see it. And the reason why, and your wife is frustrated. I say, despite all I'm doing to make you happy, you don't see it. The reason why you can't you can see that you are not present within your body to understand and feel what is going on. You have checked out. But today, God is healing. Today, God is healing. But let me tell you the first part to, to heal. You cannot heal from what you run away from. If you've checked out, checking out is a coping mechanism because you don't want to face your fear. You are afraid that something that happened to you will happen again. It's time for us to be like, I want to face this thing. It will cost me pain, but that's the way to heal. You know that when you have like a like a like a like a fibroid, they will cut you first. That cut is I know it's painful, but that cut is essential for you to heal. Someone say hallelujah. Look at look at the story. I can't read the story again because of time. The story in Matthew in Second Samuel chapter 13. The Bible says that Bible says Amnon raped Tamar. The Bible says, and Tamar became desolate. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, and Tamar became desolate. I don't know what, what trauma, maybe it's a relationship. I don't know why you have checked out. I don't know why you've why you've expressed emotional freezing. But this service is about you. It's about God healing you. It's about God healing you. You can't live that that way. You go through life, you're empty. You go through life, you're broken. You distract yourself with work. You distract yourself with so many things. You keep distracting yourself. But you know that you're empty. And God is saying that, can we, see, let me tell you something. You need to open what you want to be healed, not cover it. And God wants to heal it. Praise God. Before I continue, I'm going to ask for two people to share their own stories of emotional freezing, of what they have been through, how this has helped them. Anybody that wants to share, just raise up your hands. Anybody that wants to share, we would love to learn. And you can add your question to it. Tell me your story and put your question there. What, how you've come out of it or are you still there? How you're closed up. Anybody that wants to share? Yeah. There are many people that have experiences like me that wants to share. Anybody? Do you want to share? You look? Yeah. You sure? No, the lady in black. Do you want to share? Yeah. Okay, if you want to share, just raise up your hands. Just, just because of time. Anyone? anyone? We are we're always a sharing church. Once the first person shares, every other person now has the courage to share. Who is the first person that's going to help me? Ends up in Jesus' name. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. But regardless, he would treat my mom wrong and then treat her right. Like, I don't know. That's the way he does it. So now, getting into a relationship, if you're a man and you're treating me all good, I'll be like, you still go. It's fake. It's not. Uh, that thing, like, leaves with me that I don't see a caring man as a good thing. I feel like you're putting on a facade. You're trying to maybe get something from me. You're not doing it because you're this person. What question would you will ask me in relation to that? So I want to ask you, so because of this, what have you lost in relationships? I've lost good men. Wow. And how does that make you feel? Yeah. Think of the best one of them that you lost. How did that make you feel? It made me feel bad. It made me feel like I cannot have something good, like relationship-wise. Like, it's going to be hard for me to be in a relationship. And is that something you enjoy or it breaks you down? Does it make you cry? How? It makes me cry. It makes you cry. And do you want to change that? 
Why do you want to change that? Because I want to enjoy having my own person. I want to get married. The reason why I ask that question is this. Until you have a big why, you will never change. Until you have what? A big, because, because all the things I say today, you can be like, oh, great, 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 great. But until you have what? A big why, you will never change. And let me say something to you. I'll tell you what I think you should do. So why do you think all the men are fake? Because of what your father, right? Yes, because he's a good man, but we can't let <laughs> It's okay. We'll take time. It's part of the healing. It's part of the healing. Let it flow. So you said it's a good man. Yes. But what is wrong? He has anger issues. He has anger issues. So you think everybody will be like him, right? Yes. What's your name, please? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. You know the challenge here? The challenge is that your father can be older than you, richer than you. But right now, you are overestimating his emotional capacity. I'm sorry. I think I take that. I'm beginning to take that part of him too. What part of him? That um, anger. You begin to get. I, I will tell you why. So the first thing is that, the, and listen, everybody. One of the mistakes we make is that we overestimate how emotionally matured our parents are, especially when we're young. I'm telling. It's when you grow old, you discover that your parents have. Your dad could be dealing with his own trauma right now. And the way I would know is that, tell me about your dad's parents. Tell me. Do you know anything about them? Yeah. Use the microphone. Anything. Were they married? Did they stay together? Yeah. They, now? No, your dad's parents. My dad's parents. Yes, they, did they? They were together. They were together. Yeah. Did your... But he's a polygamous man. He's a polygamous man. You see what I'm talking about? So you may be surprised that the reason why your dad behaved like that is that it's not about you. That you are just a byproduct of his, of his own trauma. So... He may not know how to love because he never found someone to love him. And the second reason is this. This is why you're becoming what you are. Like you're taking after him. And I understand that you're afraid because you never want to be that. The second thing is this. Which is very powerful. You become what you're exposed to, not what you want. Did you hear what I said? You become what you're exposed to, not what you want. And that's why people that experience abuse and trauma... If they don't receive help, they actually become an abuser eventually. You have seen men that will say, one man came to me, broke down, started crying. He said, I, I hit my wife. The way he was crying, I mean, it's terrible to hit a woman. Even the wife said, sir, I don't know that hit. I'm not happy, but this is more than hitting me. This is more than hitting me. And I called him, I said, what's the problem? He said, this is what I never wanted to be. He said, I've become like my father. I swore. I promised my mother before she died. I will never touch a woman. I saw what my mother went through. He said, how did I become like this? See, you become what you're exposed to. So if you don't want to become that person, expose yourself to something else. Expose yourself to something else. Let me tell you what I did. You know, I came from Bologna for a minute. When it was time I was considering marriage, I moved out of my house, went to live with an older friend. He's about 15 or 20 years older than I, than I am. And I went to for about a year. His wife did not like me. But it didn't matter to me. Because for the first time, I, wanted, I was learning the dynamics of a nuclear marriage, not a polygamous marriage. You cannot become what you have not exposed to. Change. And that's why when you come to church, you know what the teaching does to you? The teaching exposes you differently. I, you know, I'll give an example. Some of you, the way you think of relationship, when you're dating, my boyfriend must give me money. I'm not even addressing either the money or the money. That's not the, my point now. The point is that it takes you to date some other people for you to know that that's an abnormally. When you date a proper white person, he will be like, what my girlfriend allowance? Huh? Even when you're dating, you say, pay yours, I pay mine. And it's not irresponsible. It's just that it's dealing with things differently. So what I will say to you is this. What I will say to you is this. I want to pay attention to two things. Number one, 
you need to expose yourself to another environment. Yeah. And we're to get, get close to people that are married, that have great marriages, expose yourself to them. It will begin to change your mind gradually. It's not a one day process. You didn't get it in one day. Then the second thing is this. Always ask yourself this. Because one person that is my father is this. Are all men like this? The answer will be no. And always remind yourself of that answer. Thank you. God bless you. you all right. Another person. We'll take one more person. One more person. Yeah. I want to see many hands up and I'll now choose. You know, many. I've seen one hand. Yeah. I need more hands. I know they're in the gallery, but I'm not sure how the microphone. I can, yeah, the, the hands at the back. Just raise your hand so I can see. Who is the person? You? Okay, she's coming forward. Yep. Yeah. There's a microphone. Yep. Yeah. Good morning. Good, good morning. So, um, I just wanted to speak to what the lady talked about. No, no, no. We don't want an extra comment. We need yeah. your personal experience. Okay, so, yeah. The, um, the reason why is that we don't want it to be contributing. We're, we're trying to help people through their experiences. Yeah, thank you. So, um, speaking to my parents and my father, um, he had, uh, when, when you talk about PhD and Professor Emeritus in anger issues. So... It was really bad that I personally had to leave home very early. I left home at nine. And uh, I had to go and leave out, right? Go and live with people. And I did that till I graduated, until uh, I started working. So I was just finding ways to run away from him. Mm. I was fortunate uh, in the course of my academics. I was never going to my parents for money because I know if I told my mom, my mom would tell my dad and then my dad would look for me and I wasn't wayward. So, I did that for years, and then when it was time, it was, he kept on um, calling for me to bring the man I was dating to the house. And of course, because I still had the fear of his person in me, and the fact that I didn't have a good parental background, which is speaking to parents who do things, uh, wrong things in the presence of their kids, which lives with them forever. So I was telling him that there was nobody. So. Unknown to them that I dated someone for a very long time, and I met him early. And when it was time, the person was telling me, um, let's get married, and I was like, no, I, I, I can't get married. I don't want to get married, even though we are dated for long. Why didn't you want to get married? Because of my parental, my parental background. Did you see what trauma does? And why? Because there was a fear. What was your fear? My fear was that it was going to be the same. Um, I saw parents fighting. I saw a lot of fights with my parents. But, um, and I carried that with me all through my uh, life. I was very, very Watch afraid. what she said. She carried it. And that's why I said it doesn't heal with time. I said it does, time does not heal it rather. It heals with time. Yes, please. So, um, at, at the end of it all, after eight years, we got married. And um, I can talk to everyone here to say I'm 18 years in marriage, going into my 19th. Um, my kids have never seen us quarrel, even though we have agreements, but of course we have a way of um, resolving our issues. Um, one thing I kept to myself and which I worked on at the beginning of our marriage was that what went wrong with my parents must not repeat itself in my home. And I'm happy to say that. But a lot of people say that, but... Yeah. It happens in their home. Why do you think so? It has to be intentional. You yeah. have to be conscious about I, I, it. I, I will tell you why I think she escaped it. And it's a strategy that she practiced. And I think God helped her. What she did was that she removed herself from the toxic environment yeah. and exposed herself to another environment. Yes. You cannot heal in the environment that bled, that, that bled you. You cannot heal in the environment that wounded you. You have to come out of that environment and heal in another environment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One more. One more. One more. One more. Yeah. You want to, yeah. You want to share your own story? You want, what's it? You want to share your own story? You, I'm asking you, the lady in black. I can hear you. Okay, yes, give it to her. She wants to share what she's currently going through. They'll tell me. Then we can come to her. Yeah. Yeah, just pass it. Praise God. So many stories, so many lives are going to be changed today. Amen? 
All right, so go ahead, ma'am. Okay, uh, for me, I think um, having been in a home where um, my parents always have arguments and uh, they really, you just feel like they don't understand themselves. I left home at 16 when I got into the university and ever since, I've never spent five days at home. So I only go home during the Christmas and I'm quick to want to run away, right? So I, I feel like I've been struggling with this fear for so long. I haven't been able to move on. Even when my dad calls me, I'm like, why is he calling me? Why? What are you afraid about your dad? Um, because you have anxiety. That's why you see a call and you panic. Yes, he sees me as his favorite daughter. Okay. Quite all right. He calls me to want to check on me. and. Um, but what are you afraid of? What I'm afraid of is having to marry someone like him. Okay. Right? Uh, having to go through what my mom... So how has your dating been? Me. Okay, so I'm a very stern and very strict person. So anytime there's something, I, I find it difficult to, you know, come to a middle ground um, because of principles and um, things that I try to set for myself. Because of principles I just, of... I, I, I yeah. try to word, I'm like, no, so, so I, I really your, don't want... Yeah, is your um, mom very... She allows your, she allows your father? She's, um, she's very soft. Yeah. So she's, um, I've seen her comment, uh, sorry, so the part where you talked about um, exposing your children to uh, things that are more than them, yeah. that happens to me. So I could, I, 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 mean, I can I tell, got, that's I, why you're very strict. Yes. Yeah, so so you're, you're, you're like emotionally you're way above your age, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you have to take care of other people's emotions also. Exactly. And, you've, so and that I, means you are quite, you're quite sad also. Because well, you're dumping ground for people's problem in the family. Well, not exactly. I, right now, my mom finds it difficult. When there's a problem, she knows that, okay, I'm telling you, why have you done this? Why This has happened before, so why did you allow this? So from a young pain? age, when you were young, when, when they're dumping on you, how did you feel? You feel privileged or you feel pain? I feel pain. So I'm a very happy person when I'm not yeah. home. So the moment you talked about being at work, you're very excited. People say you, you seem very excited. When I go home, I'm very reserved. When I mm. go home, that's when I travel home. I, I immediately just you become another person. Into, you know, so you're schizophrenic. You have another personality yes. at home. So and here. my dad isn't exactly like um, what's that word? He's not. Uh, he's not. He's not an abuser. He doesn't. But emotionally, it's something I've seen my mom go through. My mom has exposed me to... So how do you think it's affecting of, you right now? So how it's affecting me right now is... I, I, when I see... I mean, when I want to get into a Can I ask you the right question? Yes. Do you think you're controlling? <sighs> Thank you, you've answered. Continue. <laughs> and, and I'm just showing you the power of when you dump on children. I'm just showing the power... No, no, hold on to the microphone. I'm showing you the power of when you dump on children. So, in her words, she said that I have a lot of rules and regulations. No, she's controlling. And the reason why she's controlling is that she's afraid that I don't want to be like my mother's softy that was pushed to the edge because of what my father did. And you're going to have like this 1,000 rules when you want to date. Yes or no? Actually, yes. Uh, I can tell. Yes. Uh, yeah. To be honest, right? So, yeah. I, I know recent times, I mean... And how has been your dating life? I'm quick to want to run out yeah. when it doesn't seem like it's... Uh, like, I get very irritated easily. Yeah. And so I, why does she get very irritated easily? There's, you, let me tell you, your irritation is not what she's doing. It could be part of it. But there's a backload that you've been carrying since when you were young. So as soon as you see anything in him, it's a flashback. It reminds you of something you're running away from. You take off. Exactly. Uh, yes, that's true. So I want to ask you, apart from marrying Jesus Christ, who else are you going to marry? <laughs> the reason I'm saying so, it may sound funny, but I'm only saying that if you're not careful, you're going to have such, such unrealistic standards, not high standards, unrealistic standards that will knock you out of the field. And the unrealistic standard is not even based on what you want. is that your fear is driving you. That your fear is driving you. And your fear is driving you. You need to ask yourself one question, and this is what I will close. When I determine the things I want, is it what I want or is it what my fear is making me want? 
What do you think your list is? Is it what you really want or what your fear is making you want? Take your time and think your time. Think, take your time and respond to this. It's, that's pretty deep. That's um, pretty deep, right? Yes, it is. Because even if I ask the Holy Spirit to want to help me, yeah. I... Can I hear you? Can you use... Yeah. Okay. So I always ask the Holy Spirit to help me. So I haven't also been exposed to this. It's funny because I'm from a... Uh, do I say a religious family where... I grew up fasting, going to the mountain, you know, understanding the essence of being a Christian, but it wasn't reflecting. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you the reason. The same way you can be old and emotionally immature, you can be a pastor, you can be a spiritual person, and yet be emotionally immature. You can be a rich person, a politician, a musician, a celebrity, and be emotionally immature. You see it all with celebrities online. You wonder how they talk because you expect more from them. Let me tell you what I think should be your focus. Your focus is how to get the fear out so that it can live for you. Right now, you're living a very fear-driven life and that's what makes you controlling. Because, because you have fear, you have to control everything that nothing goes out of place. And that will make you very sad. Because you can lose, you can't just be yourself and lose enough as a leader, like a young girl. You are too responsible. It's called over responsibility. Does that sound like you? Actually, yes. Yeah. And when you want to date a man and you're over responsible, the man will look like to you like a project. And marriage will look like a project we have to work on, not something we have to do together. Tell me what you're thinking. Take your time. Yes. So right now, everything that revolves around me is just work. And um, every time I try to get into a relationship, oh, quite all right. It feels like God always, um, I mean, I've, I already understood that I'm a dream person. So I always see things and it's, it's easy for me to make decisions, right? Everything feels like a project to me. Even for my siblings, because I'm the oldest. I... It's even okay. For my, even for my siblings. Should I, should I tell you, no, should I tell you know, how I know you're healing? For one of the first time in your life, you're not perfect. You're crying in public. That's not something you do. Because one of the things that you happen when you dump big emotional loads on children is this. They almost want to be perfect, not to disappoint you. But children need to be children. Have their emotions. Make their mistakes. And grow from it. What's your name? Rohi. Rohi, you're doing well. One of the things, you need to be patient with yourself. Because, and you know, I kept on asking that you have a very happy life. And the reason why I know you will not have a happy life as you should do is that you will never be patient with yourself. You will beat yourself up all the time. Is that not what happens? Yes. Because um, the expectation not to, you know, repeat or be in the same, in the same, uh, I mean, be like my parents, right? It makes me want to strive to things even above, I mean. What is normal? So I want to ask you a question. Right now, what is driving you is the fear of not being like your parents. Can I give another suggestion? Why not have a vision and let your vision drive you? Fear has torment and that's why you feel the way you feel it will be punishing you it will be punishing you it will be punishing you you can't just leave you can't just be a young girl of your age you don't know what it means to be young you're so careful i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to you, you don't you just can't, you just have all these things 
and it has helped you in some ways but in other ways it has made you it has kept you in bondage and unhappy but i have a question yes so because of the fact that i'm always absent from home yeah sometimes i uh, i mean sometimes i feel like okay i'm the oldest i mean i should know something's happening at home it makes me happy sometimes when i don't know right my mom is sad your mom is sad she's not happy yeah that, don't that you don't know yeah, I and, know. And, and, and I mean, I heard from my sister. Continue. And she had to cry that I, I don't come back home. But it's me running from seeing a lot of drama. You know, it's not like they, they, they beat or hit on themselves, but the, the emotions, the emotional, the emotional trauma and um, the emotional abuse. I think that's the word. It's okay. So let me say this to you two things. Until you are whole, you can't help someone else become whole. So, your personal mental health is your first priority. Now, the question is this. But my mom is not okay. The reason why your mom is not okay is this. You are a therapy for a trauma. So, what you want to do is that, mom, all the things you're saying to me are killing me. We need to create another outlet for you to express yourself. So that I don't die before my time. Yeah, because it comes from both parents, right? From both parents. My mom is trying to speak to me. My dad is also trying to speak to me. Yeah. Sometimes they call me on the phone. My dad is reporting my mom. My mom is reporting my dad. So, my so the question is, is this. Everybody. So you need, to act, you need to have a way to create outlets for them. I'm not saying they will not still talk to you. But you cannot become that primary person. Because right now, it's affecting you. You just need to say, mom. The way you talk to me, I'll never get married. When you tell them that, they will leave you alone. The reason why is that they, your parents don't realize how this is affecting you. Do they? No. No. I'm not sure they do. Exactly. So, and that's why they think it's okay. But they don't know you're sinking. But I think my mom does. My yeah. dad who doesn't. Okay. I'm so they don't know you're sinking. So two things. You must prioritize your own mental health. And number two, you must help them look for a way to also, because if there's not for a way, they will always come back to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. How do you feel? Do you, do you have a pathway? Do you feel as if you learned something today? Where's the microphone? Oh, yes. yes. You feel? I feel that way. Let me tell them my final advice to you. Get up. Get up. Stand on your chair. You know why I told you to do that? That feels very weird and strange, right? It does. <laughs> it does. Just be a child again. <sighs> Thank you. How did that feel? You standing up. How did you feel? No, stand up, keep standing. How did you feel initially and how did you feel afterwards? <laughs> I mean, I feel better. I you mean, feel better now? I feel, I feel better. And the reason why is that give yourself the gift. Let me tell you what you can do. I don't know what you're strict on. Just be a child again. Okay. Just be a child. And you are one. Be easy with yourself. Okay. Just be a child again. Okay. Climb on the chair again. Climb. Climb on the chair again. Go. Remember when you were in primary school doing this, right? I'm not even sure you did this in primary school. You were too old to do it in primary school, right? Well, I do, I'm not sure I really played a lot growing up. Did you say? You miss your childhood. I, I know because you grew up too early. Uh, yes, I did. Give yourself the gift of your childhood again. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Is that is that of your friend that is very childish in playing? Make that your best friend. Yeah. Okay. We can have your seat. You. Praise God. Hey, let's stand on our feet and pray. Praise God. Let's stand on our feet and pray. I want you to pray that anywhere that God will reveal to you, anywhere there is a pain, and you will be healed. You will be healed. I want us to pray. 
Let's go ahead and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father, thank you for this powerful series we've started today. I'm praying for everyone here that they will receive healing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can have your seats. Glory to God. Hey. Somebody say glory.